Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through a technique that I was inspired by from Boz at How to Power BI a few years ago, where he leveraged field parameters to basically turn and date axis on the x-axis into an auto-scaling one. So as your range of dates got smaller and smaller, it automatically scaled it from year to quarter to month to date or any other level that you'd want in your date hierarchy. Now I saw that and then I also wanted to see on if there's any way to maybe do it with a couple less steps. So I was greatly inspired by it and then found a way to do it with just a single measure and a field parameter versus the original practice. So I want to hop into Power BI, show you how I built this. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start this demo, let me show you the achieved effect of the auto scaling date axis. In front of us on the ribbon chart, right now it is sales by year and brand name because we have a few different year periods in here. Now, as I start to get rid of the years, notice that it went to quarter. If I get rid of a few more years in here, let's go ahead and get it down to one year. It goes to month. And then inside of this, if I go all the way down to like a single month, then it goes all the way down to date. So it scales the axis up and down depending on the periods that I am in. Now, as I mentioned, this originally was inspired by Boz at the How To Power BI YouTube channel, where he created this with a couple of connected tables and a similar technique to what I'm doing, but with one extra table that was in there. So shout out to this video, and I will link you to the video that he did originally on this in the description down below. But this is the extra table that he required to build with this, is a date to period bridge. And I wanted to see if I could do this just with a disconnected table for the field parameter, and the same technique that he did with the top end. So I'll walk you through all the steps, but again, check out the original video. Very cool technique. Personally, I had wished I had thought about it originally, but at least I have some modification to it that you can potentially leverage as well. So let's go ahead and get back into the report. So I'm gonna start by coming over to my fields pane, and I just wanna show you what I'm using on the slicer right now. So this slicer is simply just using the standard calendar hierarchy that I have built into my calendar table. Now the trick comes in, through a visual level filter, a DAX measure, and a field parameter table. So this visual right now is using a field parameter that I created called date hierarchy, which simply has year, quarter, month, and date. And on the axis there, that is the calendar year, that is my calendar quarter year column, my month and year, and date. Now I won't go too far into creating the field parameters themselves. That is something you can find under the modeling tab under new parameter. And I just created a field parameter with those four columns in here. Now that's not connected to anything. There's nothing in the model that has the field parameter table related to anything at all. That is an island or orphan table sitting in the model. But the way to get this axis to automatically change, again, it was inspired by Boz's filter that he created and added onto that field in there using a top end. So what I did is I took the field parameter value in here and I added that a second time to the values well in here. Because natively, you don't actually get, if you put this on the x-axis in a visual, notice that on the x-axis I'm using the date hierarchy in here, but I don't actually have the date hierarchy as a column in here. I have all of the fields from there. I have quarter, month, date, and year, but the actual column of date hierarchy itself is not in here. But in a previous video that I did, I showed you actually how to add this a second time into the visual level filters well in here. And when you do that, that means that you can go to top N and I did a top one and I took the auto scaling axis and I placed that in the by values section and I selected apply, which will then means it scales in here. Now I'll show you the measure as a second, but with this applied, that means as I go down anywhere in here, it's applying that measure logic and it's basically filtering to a flagged row, which is either my year, my quarter, my month, or my date. But instead of having to have that second bridge table and relationships connecting all of them, adding this a second time to this well in here, like I just showed you, and having the measure handle the logic means it will filter to one of those four columns at a time, depending on my scale coming from my calendar table. So let's go take a look at this. The auto scale date filter in here. I'll close these down and let's expand this out so we can look at it. And I formatted this up nice and cleanly so you can read it. But basically what I'm doing is I'm determining the month count in my date range of whatever I'm selecting for my calendar table. So using a date difference from the min to the max date and basically a month count. And I'm also grabbing the selection from my date hierarchy selection. So this is a field or a measure on my field parameter table. 
over here, if I go to view hidden, the date hierarchy selection is just doing the, the max to return whatever the selection is of the date hierarchy. That's just the name. So that's year, that is quarter, month, or date. So inside of this scaled section here, I have a year scale variable where if the year selection equals year and the date range is greater than or equal to 36. So if there are 36 or more months in the ranged filtered period from any slice of selection on the page, basically flag this as a year scale. So same thing with quarter. Quarter is between 12 and 35. Month scale is between 2 and 12. And then less than or equal to 1. And essentially, I just have an if statement in my result to say if this condition is true or if this is true, any of these four um, levels that I declared up here, if they're true, return a value of 1 else 0. So essentially, only at one time will any of these conditions ever be met because they don't overlap. So that will basically flag either the year level, the quarter level, the month or the date level, depending on that month count range, that will get flagged as a one, everything else gets returned as a zero. And the trick specifically comes in by using the top end. If I just tried to add this as a visual level filter and say equals one, that doesn't actually work. Something about the way the field parameter works, it's not actually doing row filtering in the way that will get it to uh, switch versus having a second table, which is why Boz needed to use that originally to my understanding. But again, it, the trick comes in, if you add that date hierarchy column a second time into the visual filter, then you can apply a top in here, which you couldn't previously, when it was just showing the columns that were contained within the field parameter itself. So that removes that extra step. It gives the same effect that he was doing with one less table, but it creates that really nice auto scaling. And we just want to make sure that it's top one, which return that value of whichever one of these conditions are being returned to as true, with the or statement in between them to check every single one. So I tried to make this nice and clean and legible and readable for all of you. And I put notes in here to explain each one of those, but it's a nice little pattern that does let you be able to scale up and down as we are able to and then have that axis change automatically. Now I do want to play devil's advocate and mention there is one downside to this. You can only have one top in at a time. So in theory, if I wanted to come and um, let's go to say something like brand name, if I wanted to do a top in on brand name, I couldn't do that in this visual because natively every visual in Power BI can only support one filter pane top in per visual. So you'd have to bake that in to your actual auto scale filter or some other complex logic, just because as of today, Power BI doesn't support more than one top end per visual at a time. Hopefully that is something that changes in the future, but that is one of the downsides and limitations to this. But otherwise you get a pretty slick and nice scaling axis that works really well for customers who want to be able to have that without having to manually adjust their hierarchies. I'd love to know your comments on this. So feel free to drop those in the comment section down below. As always, if you have a suggestion for a future video, leave them into the comment section as well. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, please uh, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing because that will help my channel organically grow. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.